Hello, my name is Ector. Welcome back to How to Play FTB Revelation. How's it going? How's everyone doing? I hope you are doing well. Now, last episode, a few things we just need to go over. First of all, I was so incorrect about um, thermal expansion not being able to just pull from a chest, and that's because it has changed since the last time I used it. If you look here, you can see it's got this, and I can't believe I didn't even see it. Um, auto input enabled or disabled, and you can do the same with the auto output. So if it's enabled like that, um, we can, uh, oh, actually, actually, we can, we can do this. There we go. That will, there you go, that will bring it in there just like that. There we go, so that is completely working now. Now some, someone else um, said that they were having issues with putting fluids inside the smeltery and they couldn't remember how I did it or what I did. You just need the smeltery drain. So the same way that you can get liquids out, you know, like that, by just clicking the faucet, you can just put liquids in um, just using the smeltery drain. You don't even have to have a faucet on it. You just click that. Just click the block and you can see that is now in there. I've got two buckets in there. Now, if you need to get it out, then you can use something like Fluiduct um, along with a servo that we did use last episode. So it extracts items and fluids from something. So you just hook it up the same way uh, as you did with the chest that we did last episode. Just hook it up to the smeltery drain uh, and just hook it up like that. And you might need to put like a tank on there or something like that to put the... Um, Put the liquid into if that is if that is what you want and similarly you can use that um, a fluid duct and a servo to put liquid in as well and just hook it up but put the servo on the other side i hope that makes sense but there you go that's another little thing and i think there's uh, we need today we're going to focus on some automation because modded is all about getting stuff automatically so you can do other things with your time uh, and so we're going to have a look at farming things, and we're going to make a mob farm as well, which shouldn't be too hard. But first of all, I need to. You, you might have, <laughs> you might have seen this. These these beehives, which are a little bit irritating. Um, if you attack them, if you try and break it, it will take a long time, and the bees will basically kill you. So you, what you need to do is get one of these scoops, which is very very simple, just sticks and some wool. Um, and what you do is basically. There you go, you break it like that. That will be a lot quicker, just a lot quicker, and you get some bees. Now, you don't have to, you know, keep the bees, it's up to you. Um, but that's just a little just a little thing on how to do that. So, first of all, we're going to have a look at a farmer. So, a farmer, there's different ways of farming items in Modded. Um, there's a few, you know, a few different ways, as per usual. Industrial foregoing has a few mods. Um which are plant plant sower, uh, the plant fertilizer, plant gatherer. So all of these, like, you, you can basically, you know, mix and match those. But what we're going to be using is the farmer from Actually Additions. So you can see we need seeds. We need iron casing uh, with some black quartz. And black quartz you can just get from black quartz ore. And you just smelt it down, basically, like most other things. And then we, you can see we need an Inori crystal block. So how you do this is you need an atomic reconstructor, also from actually addition. So if we look at that, we just need iron, redstone, and one bit of black quartz and some sticks. So I'm going to get that together quickly. So I have the atomic reconstructor, so we're just going to plonk it down there. Uh, and you can see, you know, this is connected to our leadstone flux duct, and it does that. And you can see it starts it starts shooting stuff out. <laughs> so, what we want to do, get yourself a bit of redstone, um, and get a, get a redstone torch. This is how you um, change the settings. So right now you can see redstone mode, uh, right click to toggle. So if you put it onto pulse, it will stop doing it. Um, the way that this will now work is if you... If you come on to here, it will pulse like that. And what does this thing do? Well, actually, additions requires a lot of its own materials. And the way you get these materials is using an atomic reconstructor. So the farmer block, for instance, needs Inori crystal blocks. What are Inori crystals? Inori crystals are basically iron that has been gone through an atomic reconstructor and turned into Inori crystals. Now, we need, obviously, 
We need like 36 of them, um, but you don't have to. You don't have to do 36 of them uh, like that. You can basically put them into block form uh, and then just dump it on there like that, change it over, and there we go. We've got now four Inori crystal blocks. So it will basically do as many as power as it has. Different things cost different amounts of, well, in, in it... <laughs> In actual editions, it's called uh, CF instead of RF, but it is basically the same thing. It's the same rate, so you don't have to worry about it, and it is interchangeable. RF and CF are basically the same thing, so don't worry about it. It is still RF, okay, if that makes any sense. Right, we need some seeds. Do I have any seeds? I might not. I might not actually have any seeds. Well, that was, that was an error, an error. So what we can do, I think, I hope... Um, is let's have a look. A sickle would be a nice thing to have right now. So a sickle, uh, we don't need steel. Uh, is is this all, the only sickles that there are? Really? <laughs> we don't have like a normal one? An iron one. Right, well let's get an iron one then. There we go. Using all of my iron. And what a sickle does is if you click on a block like that, it will harvest all of that block in a range. So you can see, it doesn't just give you it though. Um, there you go. Like that, okay? And you can do the same with like flowers. It would, if there was any more yellow flowers, it would give you any of those. I'm not, I'm not getting any, I'm not getting lucky with, um, with any seeds. So give me a second whilst I get four, four poultry seeds because it's modded. You get a lot of different types of seeds. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna seed hunt for a sec. That took entirely too long. So I've got this now, the farmer. Excellent. So if we look here, Actual Editions is great because it always gives you the actual book. So it gives you a little bit of information. But then if you click to see more information, you can see. So this is obviously the recipe. But if we go just back a little bit, you can see the different types of things it can harvest. So sugarcane, which is great. Any, any sort of melons or anything like that. Wheat, cactus, which is what we're going to be using a little bit for. And anything crop based like that. So it doesn't do trees. If you want a tree farm, you, you'll have to use a different type of block. Um, but let us, let us just get, there we go, some of this. There we go. Let's get some of this as well. There we go, lovely stuff. So we're gonna come over here now and I sort of half set this up. So uh, I can't remember which way around. I think it's this way around. Yes, yes it is. Uh, and if you come in here, you can see, there you go, crystal flux, which is basically just the same as RF uh, and it's got two slots. So the way this works is it will farm in, I think it's a nine by nine area in front of it, which is basically the same as if you put a water source down and then put stuff all around it, which you will still have to do. This does not, uh, I believe it doesn't take care of the water situation. So you'll have to, you'll have to, you know, sort that out yourself, right? Let's get some water because the sugar cane will need it. And there we go. Thank you. And we also need a little bit of sand for everything. Um, something like that. There we go. So let us, let's first of all, um, let's put, let's put some water down here. Right. No, not there. Not there. There we go. So it, it works in the exact same way, the exact same way as it does in vanilla. Sugarcane will still need some water there like that. And uh, let's do let's do it here and cactus needs to not be touching each other okay that's how this works there we go uh, cactus cactus where are you there we go bam 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 and the way this works right now is obviously it needs to grow so you could bone meal it you could stand here with a watering can it's totally up to you uh, but what will happen is once it reaches its full height, it will take the top layer and put it into here. Now with the farmer, which is a great thing, it basically will auto harvest and replant itself. Uh, and that's the great thing about the farmer. That's why we're using the farmer. It's a great thing. So I'm going to let this run for a little bit. We're going to start making a mob farm now, and then we'll get back to this at the end of the episode. 
So our farmer is working nicely. You can see is harvesting cactus and our sugarcane. Uh, so this is this is playing nicely, which is great. It, it like I said, it goes slowly, um, but it is you know it is automatic, which is which is great. So um, someone asked as well. I I just realised someone asked about making steel. Um, and one of the easiest ways is an induction smelter. You can also make a coke oven and a, a blast furnace from Immersive Engineering. Um, but if you want a, a, an easier one block method, thermal expansion is probably your best bet. And what you want to do is you want to... Uh, we've got pulverized coal. I don't know if it works with coal, but let's, let's find out. Let's get some of iron. So generally, um, iron and some sort of coal will be the thing that you need to make steel okay and then um, the induction smelter is the thing that will allow us to do it now when you first start it you, you might have this on which means that you can't place blocks in there so you can just turn that off nice and simple it's the same system as everything else let's get some of this and um, so let's put the iron in there and let's put let's try the coal first let's see if that does it no so i think it's just charcoal that should do it or maybe maybe it takes maybe it takes more than one i can't remember but this should give us steel which is a pretty simple way of doing it there you go steel so, ah, so there you go it takes <laughs> it takes four and one so can we do it with coal as well yes we can so there you go pulverized coal or charcoal and some iron in an induction smelter will get you steel, which is a very simple way of going about things. And there we go. Nice and simple. So that I hope that has helped. Now, um, I've changed my mind. We're not going to do a mob farm because I figured with us doing farming, it actually makes more sense to make uh, ourselves a tree farm as well. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just focus on doing... <laughs> look, at all, look at all of this. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of lag. There we go. Let's let's get all of this. There we go. Because we don't want to keep harvesting these trees. It is a bit of a pain. So well, let's make it automatic. And the way we, we're going to be doing that is using industrial foregoing. Now, this is a, a remake of a mod called Mine Factory Reloaded. It's got a lot of the same things um, in that Mine Factory Reloaded had. But it's just ever so slightly different. But the things that we first need, um, we'll be needing the plant gatherer and the plant sower. Uh, and what you can see is some iron and machine frames, not too bad, but then you need plastic. And the way you get plastic is you get tiny dry rubber and you need to do that in a latex processing unit. So first of all, before we even do that, we need... Uh, a tree fluid extractor okay and that's how we make that so that's not too bad let's um let's get some of you uh a few of you have i got some more redstone no i don't there we go have i got iron no i don't there we go right so tree fluid extractor where are you i can never remember there we are okay so you first um Iron gear, tree fluid extractor, that should give us that. And this we will be using basically to, um, I think, generally <laughs> industrial foregoing machines, they place facing away from you. Uh, and what this does, you can see, it's got a tank. It's got a tank, which holds eight buckets worth. So 1,000 millibuckets is one bucket. Um, and you can see fluid that needs to go in there is latex well what it does there you go it if we put that down there slowly but surely this will be filling up there you go with latex and uh, this you don't need any rf no power to run it nothing like that this is automatic now the only thing is at some point this log is going to it is going this true fluid extractor is going to destroy it it will be completely gone of all latex and it will be destroyed so you have to basically keep placing a block there now there's a few different ways of going about that we might get to that later in the episode but for now we don't need that much plastic so we, we can we can survive using that so the next thing that we need is the latex processing unit so i'm going to make this quickly 
So you can see that the oak wood is fairly, fairly broken now, so that won't last much longer. Also, what I noticed is that I've added a chest here with a servo and an item duct because I was noticing that the farmer sometimes if it if it had one thing in its uh, inventory so this is usually where the seeds go uh, and this is where the harvested crops go but it was sort of getting a little bit confused as to what it was meant to be harvesting so get stuff out of there into a chest so that that is always empty and it seems to be working completely fine now so that's just a little just a little extra so ah oh, there we go that is gone uh, i don't even know how much did that make 1,854 millibuckets, so just under two. Um, have I got, let's get some wood. Let's just put another one there for now. So we need the latex processing unit. So that is what we're getting right now. There we go. So this is a two part uh, process. So first of all, we need to do that. So this one does face our way when we put it down. It's a bit confusing. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit irritating. So if we put a fluid up there, servo on there let's enable it there we go and what you should be seeing hopefully um there it is uh, it has it's getting all of that latex in there is going straight into here but you might be able to see first of all it needs power second of all it needs water so power that ain't no thing we can easily do that and that will should no um that's because this is not set to output you can see this is on blue see this is on um on orange if you remember blue is input orange is output so we change that there we go and that's now getting power excellent so it just needs water now obviously i believe i don't know i actually i don't think you can just get a bucket of water let's have a let's have a quick test and see how this works i don't think we can oh you can there we go. You can do that. Excellent. What is an easier way of doing it is uh, the aqueous accumulator. So we're going to make one of these. That looks scary, but it isn't. You can see just a fairly simple uh, device frame. So copper, tin and glass and a bit of iron. So let's quickly make that. There we go. We've got an aqueous accumulator pulls water from surrounding. So let's get that. And if we come over here, I've made a little, a three, three by one puddle, basically. And this, you should know, is an, uh, is a, an infinite water source. And if we put this in the middle, like so, this will start getting water. There you go. You can see it is full of water. So this will always pull water. It is infinite. So now we just need to pump it in here. So we do a bit of that. Another servo. Turn this on. There we go. Bam and it, this is getting water and you can see now the fluid and latex are combining to make tiny dry rubber what can we do with that well once we get nine there we go what we can do oh, and that just did some more cactus it is doing it is doing stuff it is doing stuff um what we can do is <laughs> tiny dry rubber into dry rubber just one dry rubber and then that we put into there and we can get some plastic there we go we've got plastic we've got plastic so let's go back let's go back industrial uh, and we need the if you remember the plant sower and the plant gatherer so go ahead and make those things we don't need too much plastic for that um need a few pistons a fair bit of iron again more of that pretty standard and a flower pot and what was it some 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 tools there we go it's not too bad so I have the plant gatherer here and the plant sower. Now the great thing about industrial foregoing, if you touch this little, well not touch, but click the snowball, it shows you the working area. So right now it is a three by three. You can use upgrades. So these are all the upgrades here and uh, to make the range bigger and whatnot, but I'm all right with just a three by three. And um, we turn that off and we've got here the plant sower. And if we put that here and do the same thing, there you go. That is the same area, which is exactly what we want. That is exactly what we want. So need to obviously give it some power. So let us. Yeah, we can. I think we can do this way. We can we can do it this way. Oh, hey, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Let's come in here like that. There we go. Um, let's get this crescent hammer. We don't need it connecting there. And 
Do we need it connecting here? No. Let's uh, let's do that as well. There we go. Okay, so this has got stuff. We need this to have some power as well. There we go. Let's do that. And there we go. Right. Um, bam, 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 and bam. Have I just got enough? I've just got enough. Look at that. It's like it was meant to be. There we go. And you can, basically, once once you don't need that anymore, you can totally cover it up. Um, so there we go. This is getting power. There we go. Just about. This is doing stuff. And you can see it's it's sort of sort of half trying to gather and plant stuff already, I think. Um, industrial foregoing, you can always pause like that. Very nice. So if you don't, if you're not ready, if it doesn't have enough power or whatever, something like that, you can always pause it, and then you can see it shows up on the actual block itself. So what we need to do is put oak saplings in here. Now, can you see that basically these are coloured, and they are coloured to this here? So you can sort of see where each thing is meant to go. Now, for me, for personally because i'm just using this as a tree farm we can basically do that and then we can lock it and this just means that this will only this will only accept oak saplings so that's all we need really to do you might basically want to uh you know to have something that has a few different things in in which case you need to match up with the color but i i'm just using oak saplings like that and that's all i need to do so at some point this is going to start what I also need to do is do that. Um, there we go. And you can see it starts planting stuff. There we go. It starts planting stuff. So at some point, there we go. This, once this is grown, will start harvesting the things it needs to. And you can see it will also make sludge. Um, that is a byproduct of this farm. But let's see. Have I got any? I think I do. I've got some bone meal. There we go. Let's make some bone meal. And I just want to see if this will work. There we go. Lovely stuff. Look at that. Excellent. Tree farm deluxe. All the oak wood is there. Uh, now, the one thing that might and end up in here as well is it might end up putting saplings in here. So we sort of need to we need to keep the plant sower full of saplings. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna uh, make it so that we um, all the saplings that come here and obviously I'm just I've just done a bit of that. Uh, there we go. There we go. Put those back. But what we can do is make it so that all the saplings go straight into the plant sower. Okay. And what we need for that is we need some item duct which I don't have and I need a servo. So there we have it. We, you can see we've got some oak saplings in there and a bit more wood. What we need to do now is basically get those oak saplings out of there, okay? And the way we can do this is, you remember, this server has a blacklist or a whitelist. And what we want to put it on is whitelist and put a sapling in there. So that means only what is in here right now will be pulled out, and that is just saplings. So now we just need to... Oh, we need to actually turn this on. There we go. Set that to ignore. And uh, just come down here. Uh, let's get you. There we go. And that should, that should pull out all of the saplings. There we go. And put them into the sower. So this is now a fully functional, a fully functional tree farm. We'll be getting wood, all that oak wood for free. Well, not for free, it costs power, obviously, to run, um, but this is all completely automatic. We don't have to think about it anymore, and you can upgrade this if you so wish. I think this is going to be enough for us. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to just show you is how to chunk load something. So if you're on a server or if you're in a single player, but you might make something a bit far away, and what this is called is chunk loading. So right now you can see that is where I am right now. Uh, and to claim a chunk, we just do that. So this means, you can see, that's my team area, my claim chunk. And you can see at the bottom uh, left, shift right click to unload, um, shift left click to load a claim chunk. So if I do that, it is now chunk loaded, okay? It's chunk loaded, which means that this chunk is always 
always um, loaded. So if I'm offline, it's still online, if that makes sense, okay? <laughs> this will always be online. If I go um, some, somewhere else, that chunk will still be loaded. Now, you might have to be uh, careful. What, wherever your power is, you might need to load that as well, because if the power runs out and this bit isn't loaded, you might need to load that as well. So that's just something to consider, okay? But there we have it, how to do some automatic farming in FDB Revelation. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was useful to you. If it was, a like or comment is very much appreciated. And of course, make sure to subscribe, keep up to date with this channel and all of the other stuff going on. If you've got any more questions about FTB Revelation or mods or anything, feel free to ask. If you've got any tips, feel free to leave them in the comment section as well. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Hector. This has been How to Play FTB Revelation, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.